We are continuing to look at the struggles of Austin Travis County medics and other city employees to make ends meet. Tonight we investigate what a living wage is here in Austin and what needs to happen so those workers can afford to live here. Fox 7 Austin's John Krinjak joins us in studio tonight with a closer look at the problem and some possible solutions. John. Yeah, Mike Rebecca, tonight a push is underway to raise the city's official living wage from $15 an hour to $22 an hour. That would have a huge impact on city workers, but some say that should have already happened given the affordability crisis we're in from inflation to gas to soaring rents and home prices. Earlier this week, we met Patrick Swift, who says being an Austin Travis County medic is the most rewarding job he's had. When you walk in and it's chaos, and when you leave, it's calm. Oh, that is my favorite thing in the world. Financially, it's less than rewarding, he says, with an hourly wage just under 21 bucks after nearly two years of service. That means living up in Taylor with his wife and kids and being eligible for WIC. When I hear that a City of Austin employee who is being paid by the City of Austin is eligible for food stamps, that certainly makes me pause and wonder what are we not doing right now. The people that literally jump in to save our lives every day have to be a top priority. City Council members Natasha Harper-Madison and Vanessa Fuentes point out the current EMS contract negotiations isn't a process that directly involves them, but the council does have the final say on that deal. I really appreciate EMS advocating for themselves and the union advocating for its members. That's what it's designed to do. Once there is a mutually agreed upon contract, that contract proposal will come before council. So we're still a little bit ways away before council weighs in on uh, the mm -hmm. contract but what I hope to see in this contract is ensuring that we are paying competitive wages for EMS employees that we value them. So this pilot program will help 85 families. But some council members like Fuentes and Mayor Steve Adler have been pushing hard for progressive economic policies like guaranteed basic income. Several members recently pushing for more incentives for lifeguards. Others, like Harper Madison, outspoken in their support for paid family leave for city workers. This summer, council will need to find money in the budget for all of these. I asked if these programs have come at the expense of more action on just straight up wages. I wouldn't say so. I think they're of equal importance. Um, we recognize the difficulty of jobs, the first responder jobs, EMS, APD, AFD, and I recognize how beneficial it is to families to be able to have that time to spend with family. We should be doubling down in how we pay employees here in Austin, and we should be doubling down how we tackle housing here in Austin. A big piece of that is the city's so-called living wage, which serves as a baseline for what most city workers make. It's defined as a wage that is high enough to maintain a normal standard of living. Right now in Austin, that number sits at $15 an hour. I think anyone with a calculator and 30 seconds can tell you that $15 an hour, that's not a living wage, that's a subsistence wage. That's desperation wages. A city council committee is currently considering a proposal to raise it to $22 an hour. But that number's got to be above what it takes to live in the city of Austin. According to MIT's living wage calculator, a living wage in Austin for an adult raising one child is $34.22. For two working adults raising two kids, it's $23.87. Still, as you can see, a $22 living wage could make a big difference for a lot of city workers like animal protection officers, community health workers, lifeguards, park rangers, parking meter techs, and security guards. For all City of Austin employees, we have to have the conversation of raising the wage. I'm a big supporter of $22 per hour, um, and, and certainly we'll be having those continued conversations. But both Fuentes and Harper Madison insist that alongside wages, tackling the housing crisis has to be a huge part of the overall affordability picture. Some of the things that we can do as a municipality to take some of that pressure off from an affordability perspective is more housing and more transit options. Otherwise, you know, we're going to be a city that's made for millionaires and all our police officers, EMS workers, uh, firefighters, teachers, um, you know, our musicians, artists, everybody's going to be living in the suburbs. 
Now, it's unclear at this point when the full city council would vote on increasing the living wage, but as EMS contract negotiations go into overtime, the union is hoping that happens sooner rather than later. We're live in the studio tonight. I'm John Krinjak, Fox 7 Austin News.